We, as artists, deserve to get paid for the work that we do. This is the Bold Artist Podcast. You have answers and you're expressing them in your art. Your art is important and it needs to be seen. Welcome, and let's get started with today's episode. Hello everyone and welcome to the episode. This is Black Friday 2021 and I'm here with Charla Marskalk and we thought that while the world is in a frenzy, shopping, going to sales, and it's all about consumerism, we thought it'd be appropriate to have a talk about the artist and monetizing our art. Charla, do you feel that this is a slightly controversial topic? Yeah, I think that I would say that I think it is. It's something that I have probably, well, I think I've very intentionally not spoken about anywhere in public on any of my <laughs> platforms. Um, and I choose to do it here in the podcast. Why not in the first <laughs> season? Um, I think it's a pretty controversial one. I think because uh, people want to make money they want to be able to feed their kids mm -hmm. and feed themselves. Um, but artists are notoriously known for refusing to be what they, somebody might consider a sellout. They don't want to make art that sells for the sake of making money. So mm -hmm. um, I don't think that the topic is as polarized as that. I don't think it's you either are a starving artist or you're a sellout. So I love the idea of talking about it right now around this time of year when um, I think probably the biggest day of the year when consumerism is on everybody's mind. Mm -hmm. As a Canadian, I grew up with Black Friday simply being something I saw in the news where there were stampedes in the toy stores and crazy parents like pushing other people out of the way and people dying because they wanted a toy that everybody <laughs> else wanted. I mean, it's like the height of, of consumerism or whatever you might want to call it. Mm -hmm. That's how I always looked at Black Friday. Now it's more of a, a global thing, I guess, and it doesn't quite, I don't think it really has a reputation as badly anymore, but still it's a day that we think of consumerism. So that'd mm -hmm. be a really- We think about, we think about like the big sales and what we can get yeah. and what we can save. And, Best deals. And so, <laughs> yeah. And so how does that fit into the artist and the pressure that we feel to sell and what approach should we be taking Sharla? oh there's so many approaches and i am not mm -hmm. an expert on this by any means whatsoever i think when it comes to like the black friday theme of getting the best deals and selling everything at 75 percent off um i don't think artists should be doing that <laughs> not by any means that's not at all what this talk is meant to be about i think it's just mm -hmm. an appropriate time of year to kind of talk about this as it's, it's the mm -hmm. theme of the day um, mm. I don't believe that we should definitely not be uh, selling everything for rock bottom prices on Black Friday. But I think it's just a really great topic to talk about as artists. How do we approach living in the real world and being an artist at the same time? Um, I think mm. a lot of people think of being an artist as a hobbyist. It's something they do in the corner of their house when no one's looking and nobody really knows what to do with the work that they're creating. Um, and I think that artists themselves love to do it and maybe don't value what they're doing enough to kind of bring it out into the world. So for mm -hmm. me, this is like the heart of what I do love to talk about is bringing value into the heart of the artist into what they're doing and then also i guess bringing that into people who who don't create uh art but that they can people that appreciate it bringing that kind of value into their heart as well and kind of changing mm -hmm. um changing i don't know what the right word is the stigma or the reputation of art mm -hmm. of, of the visual arts as having no meaning and no value in the world we it's easy to find value in in a practical work you know somebody who builds a house or somebody who cooks a meal we're willing to go to a restaurant and eat a meal even though we can eat a meal at home if we wanted to you know we see value in doing that but a lot of people don't see value in uh, a, a piece of visual art that mm -hmm. is just a decorative item on the wall that's how they look at it so there's no value in it mm -hmm. so i think that's the heart of this message mm -hmm. so what's the first step for an artist to begin to value their art 
enough to sell it? Does it start with valuing themselves as an artist? Like, where's that starting point for developing value? Um, I think it it's really in inside yourself. I think that um, if we've heard for the majority of our life that, oh, you can draw or you can paint, oh, that's nice, but what are you gonna do with that? What are you gonna do with it for a living? Like, you can't be an artist for a living. If you've heard that, then I think that um, that importance and what you want to pursue just goes away and you start looking at a way to make money instead of making art. Mm -hmm. And not a lot of people put it together that you can actually be a creator and make art at the same, and make money at the same time. So we want to start with the message of getting that in you that there's purpose in, in creating art. And we can look at um, more practical topics like, I think food is an art form. There's a purpose mm -hmm. in creating delicious food. My husband always likes to say, it doesn't matter what you ate as long as you ate it and your stomach's full. I'm like, yeah, yeah actually, yeah. I kind of beg to differ <laughs> on that one. Matter. It does matter what I eat. <laughs> and I think most of us who have eaten a meal from an actual artist in the kitchen will know the difference from a, a Friday night dinner at my house versus a gourmet meal like my sister will cook. <laughs> um, it's an art form and it's practical because <laughs> it's delicious. Mm -hmm. And, you know, people who design houses, that's also an art form. You can, you can design a box, you can build a box and live inside of it, or you can create these amazing architecture uh, pieces that people can live inside and have a, a unique experience. And it's, mm -hmm. a, it's a good analogy because, you know, it's easy and cheap and fast to build a box a salt box house actually I'm from Newfoundland and salt box houses were quite normal to live in back there and they were just square boxes with flat roofs on them because they were easy to build and fast to build and they provided shelter and they worked mm -hmm. and they're actually a cultural icon now really a salt box house um, but then you go to these high-end designer homes where you're hiring a architect and you're paying 50,000, maybe 100,000, probably more, just to get the drawings for the house created. Mm -hmm. And then the cost of building one of those houses is way higher because the roof lines are more complicated and, and whatnot. It's just kind of out of the norm. So you can yeah. see, um, you know, that is an art form to be able to build even a salt box house. I probably wouldn't be able to do that and it'd be like watertight and wind tight. I probably wouldn't <laughs> be able to do it. Uh, so that would be an art form. And then there's all the way up the spectrum to a high end architect. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's, but there's value in, in all of it. There's value in every end. And would you mm -hmm. hire a person to build you a salt box house and not pay them? you would pay them even if their their work is not like a new york designer so mm -hmm. as an artist i think we need to start seeing that there's practical use and important work and purpose in the art that we're mm -hmm. creating and even if you're sitting at home you've never created a piece and sold it there's value in that piece and there's somebody out there mm -hmm. who needs that work in their mm -hmm. house and i guess you need to talk about that purpose and meaning and I love that message it's it's definitely one we all need to hear I also hear uh the unspoken word there or the unspoken verse that the workman is worthy of their wage you've heard that one before yeah, right yeah. <laughs> I hear that resonating in what you're saying and what would that mean to you the workman is worthy of their wage the artist is worthy of their work well, you know, you spend a lot of time in your studio making work and you spend a lot of time learning how to create what what it is that you do, like mastering your craft. We mm -hmm. sometimes go to university. You, you, you spend your whole life growing up uh, learning how to draw, learning how to create these things. You go to maybe university or some kind of applied college where you learn more skill. And maybe now you're doing online classes and you're, you're still learning. Like I'm still learning. I've done all those things and I'm still taking classes. I'm still practicing. I'm still learning. So there's a lot of effort and value in, in everything that's come before what I've painted today, you know? And so if you, are going to paint a picture for somebody somebody wants art on their wall and they love it and they they are moved by it and they want it on their wall they should pay for it and they should pay mm -hmm. good money for it not twenty dollars not long ago i heard an artist uh, who had been 
in his line of artwork for 30 years, uh, he was saying how quickly he can render a painting. He can render it so fast and does his commissions pretty fast. And his clients were catching on like, wow, you're pretty fast. And they would say to him, how long did it take you to make my painting? And he would say, 30 years. Yeah. And that was his answer to everyone. That's a good 30 answer. Years. Yeah. <laughs> and his answer would be, however long he's been an artist is how long it takes him yes. to make that painting. Because everything you are as an artist goes into that, yes. which brings me back to that subject of worth mm -hmm. and that of knowing our worth and our value, uh, uh, being able to bring the worth out of here and attaching it to the value we ask for mm -hmm. here. And I know that subject of monetizing our art is so difficult. There's so many moving pieces and personal scenarios yeah. that we would never be able to touch on it in a podcast. But uh, there is, I think there's artists who are just starting, who they have the desire to sell their art, but they're afraid. So there's that artist and maybe we could give them a word of encouragement today. And then there's the artist who's in the thick of it they're selling, but maybe they're a bit pigeonholed and, and feel that they need a word of encouragement to just know their value as an artist, not just as a maker or a <laughs> producer, you know, but that there's a value to their heart as an artist. So Charlotte, do you have a little word for those two scenarios? I guess the first question that somebody asks is, you know, is anyone even going to want to buy this art? Well, I believe the answer is yes. If you have mm -hmm. learned and you've practiced and your work is in some, in some form of excellence, we'll always get better. And there's a 22 year old that's gonna be better than the next 22 year old or ne better than the next 32 year old. So you, you can't really compare yourself. But if you have been learning and practicing and spending the time it takes to become excellent at your craft, then there's value in purchasing it. And then the other aspect is what is the the message of your work? What is the story that it's telling? There's value in what we put into our work because it normally has um, it has it has lived in our in our soul for a while. Like we mm. we we paint. Usually we create out of our experiences of mm -hmm. quite often something that happened to you that was painful and that you've walked through and and maybe a journey through and and it's better now. So we, we paint about that. A lot of people paint their grandchildren because they love their grandchildren. It's taken a lot to get to the place of having a grandchild to paint. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> you know, just on a more like a uh, common level. But I paint with the idea that I want to paint all of humanity and show that we are the same because there's so much discussion over how we're all different. So my work is all about how no matter what we look like or our age or where we come from or if we're living on the street or if we're living in a penthouse we all go through that same the same type of pain some a little deeper some a little longer and if you're open we come to places of uh, solution and healing so we get to tell those stories in our art in some form i think that's what everybody's talking about in mm -hmm. some form some people are just painting their pain and some paint people are just painting their absolute joy and they don't want to deal with their pain but in mm -hmm. some way we're, we're telling those stories so that's the story that i'm attempting to tell so i think that's a valuable message to get out mm -hmm. into the world and what's so amazing about art is that people don't necessarily question it if it moves them. They might question it if it doesn't move them. If they see something really weird, mm -hmm. like, what are you doing? <laughs> but if they walk in and their heart is moved by it because there's a message in that for them, um, they allow that art to speak to them and, in I believe, heal them in some way or another. And I've said this lots of times before. It's like music. When a song goes in into your... Uh, soul it can bring you to tears and sometimes you don't even know why but I believe that's a form of healing something the message mm -hmm. of that song was meant to get inside you and heal you it can be nostalgic it can make you feel like Christmas just by simply putting on jingle bells you're suddenly thinking about childhood mm -hmm. Christmases art has the power to move you to transform you to transport you so as a new artist or an old artist you need to recognize that your message is important and mm -hmm. to dig for that message. Like don't just mm -hmm. paint a flower because you think it's pretty. 
why do you like flowers? Why are you drawn mm -hmm. to them? And maybe you're, you're painting a rose because you think that's what everybody wants to see on a canvas because it's a common mm -hmm. flower of love. But what mm -hmm. about if you looked at all the flowers and you see which one really spoke to you, learn about that flower. I would, I would be willing to bet that with a little bit of searching and a little bit of understanding of why you're drawn to that subject matter will begin to develop your story and begin to develop a more powerful process of expressing that on a canvas. And it won't any longer just be a rose you're painting. It'll be a flower somebody's never heard of and in, in ways with mm -hmm. different light that nobody's ever done it before because your story begins to inform your process. And then mm -hmm. your art becomes incredibly powerful and that's when it moves mm -hmm. people. So if you're a new artist, if you're a young artist or you're just not sure on if you should be taking this step, I believe 100% you should. And those are the mm -hmm. things to look for in, in knowing if you're um, kind of ready, I guess, to do that. I love what you just said about allowing your story to inform your pieces. You might have worded mm -hmm. it slightly different, but um, allowing that story out through your art and that's what brings it um, value. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we need that person ahead of us, that mentor to look and say, I give you permission to step into this realm. You're good enough. You're valuable enough. Mm -hmm. Your story's worth it. Yeah. And that's what you're doing here today on Black Friday when the world's in a frenzy and it's all about shop, shop, shop. Um, I love your heart, Sharla, of, of just coming back to that basic and saying, yeah. Let's pause all that for a minute and talk about your value and your worth yeah, and how you're selling. Well, I think that's, that's what it is. You've spent all this time, you've had these experiences and then your work moves somebody. It's, it's, you deserve to mm -hmm. be, um, I hate to use the word paid for it. You know, you deserve to be paid for this emotional response that they got. It's not really mm -hmm. like that, but it's, it's an, we should be honoring each other in the things that we do. Mm -hmm. You don't go mm -hmm. to see a concert. Like I go to see you two and pay, I don't know, like $180 or something to see them for a concert once. And I never thought once that that was too much money to pay because mm -hmm. and I, at the time I didn't have much money to spend, but I wanted mm -hmm. to see them. And the value of that experience was way higher than what I even paid. I don't know that I would have paid more for it, but you know, it, <laughs> they deserve to get paid. They're traveling all over the world. They got massive mm -hmm. crews. They deserve to get paid. Well, so do we, even if you're just working in your kitchen, you deserve to be paid for the value that you're giving people in their lives. And it's not to say that, of course, we can't um, do things at times for free. I hate saying that to artists because we're asked to do that all the time. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many times mm -hmm. as a photographer I was asked to take pictures of models and then I could use it in my portfolio. I'm like, I actually don't need a portfolio. <laughs> I have a huge portfolio. I don't need extra models <laughs> in my portfolio. You know, people think we should be giving these things away for free because it's a good cause all the time. So mm -hmm. there's definitely a time for uh, putting putting our art somewhere at where we, we don't get um, compensated for it. But I think that's like anything. If you're making, if you have a salary of $100,000 a year, you might set aside some of that money to give to charity work or to people in need or whatever's on your heart where you want to help or you give of your time, you know, like you, you, you set aside part of that to give away. And as artists, I think that uh, we can also do that. And then when you intentionally mm -hmm. say, well, I'm going to give this art to a charity cause and they're going to be able to make money off of my art, then um, you it feels meaningful mm -hmm. and important mm -hmm. and, and good. And it is good. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. when somebody comes along and says, well, can I just have this, this piece of, of your art to put into a fundraiser for my kid's hockey team? You're like, actually, that's not, not saying that you couldn't do that if hockey is dear and near to you, but mm -hmm. maybe it's not. And this person doesn't even know you and they just want your art to sell mm -hmm. for nothing. Mm -hmm. Then you can say, no, I actually mm -hmm. do this in other ways. You're not just gonna give your money away to every homeless guy on the street and let your kids starve. So don't give your art away to everybody who asks and starve. <laughs> Find yeah. worth yeah. and places to put it where there's worth a meeting. And what I also hear in that is it's, it's you saying, come in into line with your values. 
yeah. where you give your art is also in line with your values, which comes first here, mm. knowing your value, knowing your worth, and then aligning, like if you are to give anything away, that it would be in line with what you value. Yeah. Uh, not just here, there, everywhere. Um, and it's okay to say no. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's and part of valuing ourselves. We put our energy into our work. We put power into the work. The message we're putting in it is power. It is powerful. Mm-hmm. So if you mm-hmm. are just throwing that out, that that energy and that message and that power that you're putting into it, really mm-hmm. it, it falls away and it gets lost and it becomes mm-hmm. uh, way less meaningful than if you put that into the place it was meant to go so we have to be Mm. intentional and we have to to watch what we're doing um there's always a word i'm looking for that i can never find when i'm on here um but it 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 devalues it but it's um it's it's also kind of sad and i think it's it's sort of why we often look at it as less meaningful like if you if you take Mm. your work you sell it for 25 dollars people um like i i put okay here's an example i put my work in a charity event at one point like an auction and they screwed it up somehow and i had a minimum price on it and somebody bought my piece for less than the minimum price that it was supposed to sell for Mm. and it was a little bit of a debacle and i saw Mm. somebody one of the other artists later they're like oh i saw this guy like just grab um the art and just walk away with it and like threw it down and went off and got a drink and he mm-hmm. he didn't really the picture that I got from it was that he didn't value what he had just paid for mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. that wasn't the intention at all of that but sometimes that happens in in different scenarios but sometimes how mm-hmm. we put it out there and say this isn't worth anything makes the other person think it's not worth anything even though they just bought it so they value mm-hmm. it differently yeah so we have the chance to uh, portray the value that it is by our own attitude. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. so it's really, it comes, it keeps coming back to that inside value yeah. of knowing yourself and valuing yourself because then once we get the courage to monetize it, to put that price tag on it, that price is going to still reflect the value that we feel mm-hmm. too. Or, you know, like the inside out. Yeah. And then that has that ripple effect on the consumer, the person mm-hmm. who purchases it, the client who purchases it they when they engage in that purchase they're confirming the value which is so exciting to sell a painting is so exciting because of that confirmation yes. that yes it has value yeah. and someone sees the value and they fell in love with it and they want to especially when it's that one of a kind original mm-hmm. it's just it's just so special to see it so i remember uh, being at the vancouver art show and seeing someone purchase one of your pieces and we were all doing a little <laughs> happy dance as they walked away yeah. <laughs> from your booth. It's so special because you'll never recreate that mm-hmm. piece. It's just one of a kind that's out there owned by a collector who wanted it, yeah. right? And so so that coming from the inside value to the price tag, the consumer engages in that and it creates this, I guess, the synergy of value for art mm-hmm. that... Um, we all are active in raising the bar and raising the value. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, and then from there, if it comes down to um, needing to make money and which it always does, I don't care who you mm-hmm. are. It always comes down to making money, needing mm-hmm. to make money because we have bills to pay. And even mm-hmm. if you're paying your bills, it's always good to have more money to go on a vacation or buy new mm-hmm. shoes. Um, <laughs> you know, there's always a reason to, to, to not turn away more money. So if you're wanting to build your your art business, you know, I think um, there's lots of other ways to look at monetizing as well, because it's not mm. always easy for you to have a to, to sell your original art pieces. You know, there's a lot mm-hmm. of different models mm-hmm. and places you can go with it. You know, you can sell online and there's online galleries that um, work like Saatchi Art is like a huge online gallery that you could sell on, although it's hard to get seen. You can sell on your own social media. Getting into galleries in the traditional old fashioned way is, a, is it's a tricky business. It's a lot of hard work mm-hmm. getting gallery mm-hmm. representation. Um, you know, there's some of those more traditional thoughts on how to sell your work. Then there's the print industry that you can consider. And there's several models of the print industry that you can go into. 
depending on um, what you're thinking. Like I know people who go online and they sell they sell prints online, but they also put their art on wallpapers. I think we've um, there's a local artist here who does that and on pillows and on phone cases or whatever. And mm-hmm. I tried selling those things at one point. I didn't love doing that though. And not all art really needs to go in that direction. But what I'm trying to say, there's lots of different ways to monetize your art. Mm-hmm. And there's so many good resources out there. Mm-hmm. I know we couldn't even touch on it all in this podcast, but there's so many good resources. And and always remembering though, even if you go searching for avenues and opportunities to monetize come back to this message of knowing your value Mm. on the inside first of knowing who you are of knowing what you're worth as an individual and actually i've gone through this process charla of of needing to sometimes step outside myself as an artist and saying hang on mary janelle has value first just being me then adding my talent to mm-hmm. me <laughs> um, because that's a big deal for artists because sometimes we feel that we get the attention because of our talent people are worth worth recognition just for being mm-hmm. here alive breathing having existed <laughs> it's so true so and i kind of i always like to put myself through torture of thinking well, what would i do if i went blind Or what would I do if I had to cut my hands off? (laughs) For some reason, I was in an accident and I couldn't do what I do. Would I have value? And of course, my kids, they wouldn't love me less or my parents or my husband wouldn't love me less. But suddenly, would I love me less if I couldn't do art? Mm-hmm. I'd actually say, yeah, I would. I would have to go through a long process of healing mm-hmm. to get back mm-hmm. to accepting myself without being an artist. Um, and mm-hmm. that's just, I, I do it. Mm-hmm. That's why I think about it because I'm like, maybe I can heal that process before it happens to me. Um, it's like my <laughs> greatest fear. But I think that's what you're saying. Like we, we have value in who we are as human beings. The message and the work that we're doing mm-hmm is a different purpose outside of our our own personal value. So Mm -hmm. I think when Mm -hmm. artists are scared of becoming a sellout or being taken advantage of, just standing firm in in knowing who you are and the value that you hold Mm -hmm. helps us make the right decisions going forward. Mm -hmm. Because there's Mm -hmm. always going to be a time where somebody's going to ask you to do something that you don't want to do. So you have to decide, am I still going to have integrity when I'm done painting Mm -hmm, that tree? mm -hmm. You know, like I'm painting a tree for somebody because they're like, I'll pay you lots of money to do it. (laughs) Like, I don't want your money. (laughs) So just believe that you somebody will pay for the portrait I'm painting. I don't need to. uh, I don't know what the right word is, though getting a little bit crude, but I just I don't need to (laughs) bow down to that and sell myself to do something for money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that's the fear of artists. As your friend, Sharla, knowing your determination and what would you do if you lost your ability to use your hands and make art? I think you'd find another way. Sharla would be painting with her feet or her mouth. I don't know if you know the artist Joni Erickson who paints with a paintbrush in her mouth. That has inspired me since I was a child Me too. the determination yeah that people have mm-hmm. to push through anything that hinders you really yeah. anything that comes against you yeah. as as humans we have this tenacity <laughs> and ability to be bold yeah I agree. <laughs> and to push through yeah. and that's part of it that's part of knowing who you are yeah there's um a phrase that's like if for such a time as now like you're here for such a time mm-hmm. as now you weren't born way back 100 years ago you were you know you're not meant for the future you're not you're meant for now and now's the time yes, so to important. be who you're meant to be and that comes to your worth and that worth to monetizing your art and knowing the value and it's all connected yeah. it's like interwoven yeah. meshed together it's so true you know my mm-hmm. my story was when i knew that i was going to pursue art as a career i the only thing i knew was to go get some prestigious gallery to represent me and then i will mm. have made it and maybe right. a collector will come along and pay ten thousand dollars for one of my pieces of art or thirty thousand and maybe i'll have a sellout solo show and that was mm. all i knew and i was pursuing mm-hmm. it 
but it was Mm -hmm. it was like sucking the life out of me like Mm -hmm. having to send a hundred applications to galleries i never heard of and tell them how wonderful they Mm -hmm. are and hope that somebody will respond (laughs) you know like this it was just horrid and i was i just was like what what is the meaning of this where am i supposed to go with my work so i kept painting Mm -hmm. and i kept showing and and doing what i could do but and and then teaching started happening like teaching workshops started happening so my thought was i don't want to spend my whole life teaching workshops i want to be painting i don't want to be spending all my weekends teaching workshops but i started finding fulfillment in it Mm -hmm. and my work started Mm -hmm. having more value and people started talking about it more and asking me more Mm -hmm. questions and purchasing it more it all just kind of like it grew together And that was Mm -hmm. when um, a whole bunch of stuff came together and I decided to do online classes and everything had just grown from there. But if Mm -hmm. I had been, um, I think my point is that if I had been stuck on this one path that I thought the only path for a successful artist was or the only place that there was Mm -hmm. value as an artist, it's like being a Mm -hmm. singer and you want to be number one on the American Top 40. That's the only value you have in your life. You're going to have a struggle because only one person is there each week. And there's a lot of people trying to get there. So it might not be the place you're going to get. And it doesn't mean you're bad. Mm-hmm. And just because I haven't right. sold, have a, sol- a solo show in New York or L.A. doesn't mean that my work isn't as good as people who do that. So mm-hmm. I opened up my mind and my vision to see a different mm-hmm. route for myself. Where was the value and the fulfillment? Where were the people that were willing to pay me for what I was doing? And I mm-hmm. took that route mm-hmm. and I, I came here. I'm here now mm-hmm. with uh, running an online school. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm doing things I never dreamed I was going to be doing three years ago. I just didn't dream mm-hmm. about these things at all. Mm-hmm. And so where am I going to be in five years? I'm just going to keep going down that road that's kind of um, where the light is shining, I guess I could say. I just mm-hmm. keep moving down that road. So we need to be open to uh where where your path is and that it's not going to be like the other person and that you don't need to be like me or mary janelle or anyone else that you're uh listening to or watching to online you can you you have a journey and a route that's yours and if you don't Mm -hmm. take it the people standing on that road are going to miss out on what they're standing there for so you have to run down your road Mm -hmm. not mine Mm Oh, I love it. I love it. Thank you, Sharla, for sharing, just sharing on this topic and being bold enough to speak into this topic of self-worth, the artist's worth, the worth monetizing our art, and giving us permission, really, to to value ourselves and to value our art and not sell out <laughs> on Black Friday. Yeah. Don't sell out. <laughs> Yeah, don't sell it, but go make money with your art. (laughs) Exactly. Perfect. Yeah, I love it. So thank you for for all of it. All right. Well, happy weekend, everybody. Thanks, Mary Mm -hmm. Jo. Yeah, see you later, everybody. Till next episode, keep creating.